Welcome to the first ever virtual Small Press Fest from the University of Illinois. We'll be telling you about some wonderful publications put out by local small presses. My name is Monty. My name is Karen, and we're going to start with a set of beautiful experimental fiction from the Meekling Press, run by Rebecca Elliott. Uh, when I first read the description of this, I was very curious about what experimental fiction was, and then when I got here and saw all of this beautiful artwork, I realized that is exactly what experimental fiction should be. So if you look at this, you've got a little paper garbage can shape, and you open it up, and there's poetry inside. It I was just keeps for going. Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> nice too. It's absolutely gorgeous. Can you imagine the time it took to make that? So you see how creative these artists are. These artists slash authors slash poets. We also have a set of old school floppy disks with poetry written on the outside, and these uh, it looks like hand sta handmade uh, stamps decorating them on the inside. And these are, all of the artwork is for sale, and these are $4 a piece, which is quite a steal for all the time that must have taken going into that. And then the uh, Meekling Press also offers this gorgeous book that has a quotation stamped on the outside. It's probably hard to see from there, but you can kind of feel it. <laughs> and it was printed at Art Farm Nebraska, so this comes all the way from the cornfields of Nebraska. And when you open it up, you can see these beautiful folds. You can see all that gorgeous printing inside. I love the colors. The blues and the greens are very calming. Mm. It's a, a lovely, very soothing art piece. Yes, and uh, this is from the Meekling Press out of Chicago. It is a collective of artists and writers. And it is uh, a group which produces anything from, as you see, very small uh, items for four dollars up to larger fifty dollar uh, artist books. Now our next artist slash writer is Aim Beland. Aim Beland is a trans storyteller from Chicago, also a very very accomplished uh, visual artist if, if this is any indication here. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, Aim's publications. One is a Riso Press, little booklet or pamphlet or just little piece you could call it. It is uh, something which melds the visual and literary form here. And we've got a little how to brew coffee in a French press. <laughs> Again, it is uh, instructional as well as very, very dainty and beautiful and creative. That is uh, Aim the Land out of Chicago. These mini risograph scenes are $2 each. Next up, we have a local artist slash boxer uh, named Kofi. And as you can see, this is another person with many, many, many talents. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kofi creates these awesome, awesome manga uh, zines, comics, booklets, where you can see here the main character is a, a black character, and the goal here is to bridge, uh, excuse me, I have a direct <laughs> quote here. It increases black representation in the, form in the form of manga, and it builds international bridges. That's the goal of these pieces of art slash writing. Uh, they all have these amazing stories. You can see the artwork is incredibly vivid. It's very bold. It's this awesome character. Look at that expressive face. And the colors really jump out at you to really draw the reader slash admirer in. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have Grant Thomas. Grant Thompson? Grant, I'm sorry, I apologize. Grant Thomas is a comic artist and writer from Champaign, Illinois. Now, Grant uh, produces several different uh, items, including a series of tiny, tiny, little, and when we say small press, sometimes we are very literal about this, very small, exquisite little, uh, little books, uh, often focusing on environmental issues. He also produces My Life in Records, which is 
small, but these are in color. <laughs> really, really cool. I, I think they are a delight to look at. Just, just the colors themselves, but don't go just for the colors. There is, uh, these are autobiographical and music based. And then we have Doom Comics. Dodo. Sorry. Dodo Comics. I'm the Dodo. <laughs> these are also the Dodo. Uh, Dodo comics come out, I'm not quite sure how often, but there are several of them, so it is a periodical of a sort. If you are interested in Grant Thomas, well, the information will be on screen for you. All right, next we have two really, really cool comics. Here we've got a comic, uh, one issue of a comic by an artist named Andrea Pearson. She is another Chicago-based artist, and she creates a series of comics called The No Pants Revolution, <laughs> and they're, they're somewhat autobiographical. They feature her and her observations in, on life in general, the struggles she encounters day to day, and this one comes with this, a page like of this. stickers at the back. You, you can don't see this too often. decorate your own pantsless person. You can <laughs> give them some underwear. And <laughs> I just love how whimsical this is. She's clearly having a lot of fun creating all of this. Um, and Anne Pearson, excuse me, Andrea Pearson's work is also featured in this comic collection. This features the work of several artists out of Chicago, including our own Aim Beland, whom we met earlier, the creator of these tiny little zines. And this is a, the Season of the Witch is a very, very fancy, shiny pageant <laughs> uh, comic that features several different stories, several different styles of art. Some have words, some have only pictures, and it just celebrates the artistry of Chicago comic artists. And how many artists do we have involved in this right here? 17 tales, 17 tales. Uh, if you're familiar with EC Comics from the 50s, the notorious and wonderful EC Comics, this is obviously stylistically a tribute to that. Uh, it's a good way to find out if you're interested in uh, graphic artists. There are 17 graphic artists that are, uh, whose work is featured in Season of the Witch, which is a zine put out by the Northside Comic Artists of Chicago. Next, we have Joe Mason. Joe Mason is a Chicago writer. He writes the sightseeing column from the Chicago Reader. You may be familiar with him from that. He publishes his own quirky little, not quite actually as little as some things, but uh, <laughs> Chicago history. Now, this is a little bit different from a lot of this in that it is history. It is nonfiction, but it is uh, from his own perspective, uh, things that you normally wouldn't get in textbooks and in uh, classrooms. Chicago gets four stars. It's all about really interesting little stories from Chicago history. For example, did you know that there was a lager beer riot? <laughs> did you? You will if you read this. You get to hear the uh, story of Burning Bluebeard, the Chicago River Fire, in which the river actually started on fire, and something called the Whitechapel Club Torches Corpse which is uh, something that happened in 1892. Yes, there are some very uh, interesting little stories here. All true, all Chicago. Also, issue two is actually published on a matchbook. If you like fire and you like Chicago history, it's a little story about the Chicago fire published on a matchbook. All right, our next collection of publications is absolutely delightful. This is a series of uh, publications chronicling the year-long project that Peter Bergman conducted, wherein he left leftist-themed zines in affluent neighborhoods in Denver, Colorado. Uh, he uh, spent a lot of time looking for and distributing zines that focused a lot on feminist issues, um, the importance of intersectionality in feminism, and he calls his project 
leftist leaflets in little libraries. And it, this, excuse me, yeah. <laughs> this collection will teach you all about all of the wonderful things that he learned that he did as he was distributing this information in these affluent areas that might not usually have access to things like this. Uh, so while you are reading about little libraries, you might also be interested in learning about a little library scavenger hunt right here in Champaign-Urbana, sponsored by the UMA, the Underrepresented Muslim and Minority Advocates, which is a registered student organization at the U of I. And you can look for more information with them about their little library scavenger hunts. And uh, I've been told that there are somewhere around 50 or so little libraries in the Champaign-Urbana area. Awesome. If you're not familiar with the little library, refer to the little, uh, they look kind of like old, news, old newspaper boxes, uh, those pretty little little bird box things which uh, allow you to take and leave books. You'll see them all over the country now. It's amazing how just in the past few years, the little library has uh, colonized all over the country. And if you're lucky, you'll find some leftist <laughs> slash feminist <laughs> literature in one. All right, next up, we have some wonderful fiction by Josh Sanders. Josh D. Stan Josh D. Sanders is a local fiction writer. He writes some very interesting, creative, and just looking at the blurbs, uh, some wonderfully creative, interesting. Uh, uh, he has written several series. Um, as you see, we have four books here. Uh, Organized Magic is part of the Mind Over Magic series. And there's also the Hunter Sonata, which is a series. This is one example of the Hunter Sonata. Uh, then we have Poison Magic, which I believe is also part of the Mind Over Magic. Uh, I would like to, if you don't mind, I think you will indulge me. If, if I, I could read just a little bit here, try to get your interest. Autumn Graves is a bounty hunter patrolling for work. She won't take just any job, though. Only the hardest and worst of the bunch are good enough to test her skills and abilities. When a dark wizard plans to summon a god to grant him unlimited power, Autumn's true nature will be put to the ultimate test. That's something pretty much all of us can identify with right there. Uh, whether or not you actually are a bounty hunter, if you like a ripping good yarn, I think uh, Josh D. Sanders has quite a few for you. Uh, now he self-publishes uh, under his own name, Josh D. Sanders. <laughs> I am super, super excited about these next publications. I think they are absolutely marvelous. This is a series of zines by Liz Mason, who runs the, uh, manages Quimby's Bookstore in Chicago. And she is selling several issues of Awesome Things, Caboose, and... I'm sorry, when you say Awesome Things, it is literally called Awesome Things. Yes. These little books are uh, part of a publication uh, called Awesome Things. And, and they are literally lists of things that are awesome. Just <laughs> reading them, you feel very cozy and happy, mm -hmm. and it's a good reminder that there is goodness in the world. There are good things that and you awesomeness. can be surrounded by, and awesomeness. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Caboose, which is a very, very interesting, kind of eclectic little publication that has several different kinds of uh, literary slash artistic content. You can see lots of different drawings, lots of different uh, <laughs> typesets to indicate the uh, different sections. And then we also have a zine called Cul-de-Sac that she publishes. And again, beautiful, beautiful artwork here um, and very interesting uh, stories, essays, poems, etc. Just kind of an eclectic collection here from Liz Mason. Um, the prices here are also very, very reasonable. Everything ranges between one to five dollars. And again, it is all for sale. I should have mentioned <laughs> that and reminded you that you can purchase all of these wonderful things. Thank you, Karen. All right, next up we have some work by Julia Arundondo. Julia is originally from Texas, but she's now based in Chicago, and she is, as well as being an artist, 
and writer, quite the entrepreneur. She is the owner of Quran, uh, sorry, Quran Dara Press, as well as Vice Versa Press. And those of you who know Spanish know that curandera refers to traditional medicine, including things like, as you can see here, spells to kill your boss. And when I say spells to kill your boss, there are literally spells listed <laughs> in here. Uh, there are also, uh, not only do you have words, but you have some very whimsical, fun artwork as well. Uh, and if you are into killing your boss or just causing mayhem <laughs> with traditional magic, or you just like whimsy, I think this can appeal to a lot of what you want out of a small press uh, pamphlet. Pamphlet is not the word. It is a tiny little book. That is what it is. Also, some cure us uh, so, uh, some uh, uh, prayers, incantations, realizations, seals, and dichos for better friendship. Guide to being broken, fabulous. Something that I think most of us could take some hinders on. Mm -hmm. A video blessing kiosk with a wonderful little candle here. So yes, this is Julia Arundondo out of Chicago. All right. Um, next up, we've got collections of issues of magazines from the Champagne Chinese Magazine. Now, this is a publication that has been around. It's been printed locally for uh, nearly 30 years, and they I do not know Chinese well enough to have known this just by looking, but this magazine is printed in three different, uh, well, two different forms of one language and then a second language. We've got the traditional Chinese, the simplified Chinese, and then, of course, English. The goal of the uh, Champagne Chinese magazine is to maintain and promote cultural diversity and understanding, and they have both online and print editions that are read, distributed among readers in 50 countries slash regions all around the world. So 50. that's pretty, yeah. Wow. That's really impressive for just a tiny little local publication. All right, next up we have Ninth Letter. Ninth Letter is the official publication of a registered student organization at the U of I. Actually, it is the uh, creative writing program. It is their, uh, it is their uh, journal, uh, I guess it would be their publication, uh, which comes out, I don't know how often it does come out, I believe twice a year, I think, uh, I think twice a year. It has as you can see, it has wonderful covers. It has many, many works from the University of Illinois students. Uh, I believe both grad students and undergrads. It has everything from uh, poetry to prose to short fiction. It has screenplays. It has visual art. It has photography. It is a multi-form uh, forum for people to show their creations and uh, it is, as I said, it is a, uh, a, a U of I publication, an official U of I publication called The Ninth Letter. Yeah, it's kind of just an awesome way to celebrate all of the different talents of mm -hmm. U of I students. Mm -hmm. And another way to celebrate the talents of U of I students is through the Montage Arts Journal. This is another student-run publication and it features everything from scripts to photography. It features a little bit of, it's called an arts journal because it features all different arts. It's not just written publications. It's uh, a little bit of writing, but as you can see, it also has some images of actual physical artwork created by students. It's got, uh, it's got some scripts in here. Here's another beautiful photograph that was done by a student. So the montage is true to its name, just a little bit of everything. It has published 13 issues so far and plans to release a 14th issue this year. And yeah, this one I'm pretty sure is, uh, is annual. I, I believe they put out one per, per school year. 
All right, and we have come to our final publication, or our final uh, publisher, so to speak. I don't know if you would call it a publisher. It is small press. Uh, this is some very interesting work here. This is Will Arnold, or actually these are publications put out by Will Arnold. What Will Arnold does is he takes pre-existing comics. Uh, in this case, we have two examples. We have Fight and then we have Ghostland. Ghostland, he takes original art from a 1970s Casper comic and sort of mixes it up. It is like a visual uh, mashup where he just creates stories with just the background art. And uh, sort of choose your own adventure. There is no text whatsoever. But that, uh, it is interesting. It's an experiment in your own brain when you read something like this. You get to make up your own story with the original 1970s art. Something very similar he did with this comic called Fight from the 1940s, which is a far more violent comic than Casper from the 1970s. Uh, it does not... Also, it uh, does not have any uh, dialogue except for... Well, actually, I'll take that back. It does have a little bit of dialogue, unlike the Casper, but it is totally reimagined. He has taken this old comic and both physically and, um, well done. Can I do that over? <laughs> this is, yeah, it's cooler than I thought, actually. <laughs> All right. Can I, I'll, do you mind, I'll just, uh, you can try to do it as smoothly as I can. All right. <laughs> and then here we have Fight, which is based on a comic from, I believe, 1940 in which he takes the art, kind of like Roy Lichtenstein, and has put it on this long fold-out. On the back, we have the original dialogue. So, it is a very interesting little take on uh, the original form, and it is reimagined as I don't even know what this genre is. That's the wonderful thing about so many of these. They are their own art form. I don't know, what would you call this? It is an accordion zine? An, an accordion zine. It is an accordion zine reimagining of 1940s <laughs> violent comic book art <laughs> with, uh, I mean, in the abstract, it's so fun to watch these very well-muscled violent men and <laughs> Hey guys, cut it out. Guys, stop. Have a <laughs> coconut on me, pal. I'm in a generous mood. That and many more dial you know, dialogue balloons you will be able to read when you get fight. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your listening to and learning more about all of these amazing artists and the incredible things that they've created. We hope that you're inspired to go learn more about them and check out the rest of their work on your own. Maybe even create something yourself. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, maybe next year we can do this all in person. But for now, let's do it virtually. And uh, as Karen said, so much creativity. So much creativity in, uh, in this. I believe every single one of these is based somewhere in Illinois. Some in Ch the Champaign-Urbana area, some in Chicago. But uh, all wonderful, creative, very small press, but uh, big talent. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>